What's up guys, this is Brian Marin. And I'm Ryan Mosley, and today we're gonna to teach you about the ADAS graph. All right guys, today we're gonna to be introducing the ADAS graph. What ADAS means is aggregate supply and aggregate demand. So, aggregate means putting everything together. So it's all the demand and all the supply. All right, so here we have price level, which means the overall current prices in the economy. Down here we have real GDP output. What that means is a total amount of output in the economy in a certain country. All right, so we all know AD. AD is always downward sloping. What AD means is that when price level is up, when inflation's up, it means consumption is down. When inflation is down, consumption's up. And then we also have AS, which is always upward sloping. This means that when prices are low, then the production is low. When prices are up, then production's up. This could be manufacturers, businesses, stores, etc. Okay, so here in the middle where these two intersect, it's called equilibrium. So this is going to be price level at equilibrium, and this is going to be quantity at equilibrium. But we're not done. There's another line called the LRAS, which means long run aggregate supply, and that goes here. Okay, so what LRAS means is everything that will be produced in the long run. So, when price level moves, it's the only one that's, that's going to be moved on this graph, on the LRAS. When output's never going to move, so no matter what, uh, the quantity is always going to be the same. So, let's say that AD increases. No, so, AD increases. So that'll bring, it'll be, it'll bring us to a new equilibrium. So, now you're saying price level and output increase. Now let's back up. When, seeing as how price level increased, inflation increased. So in the long run, prices of resources will increase, which will cause AS to decrease or shift to the left. So, AS is going to move to the left causing this to come back to where it was at quantity one. So as you see, quantity never changes. Price level does. Okay, now let's say that AD decreases. So AD decreases. Okay, again, you see that they both shifted. Now, let's back up again. In the long run, prices of resources will fall when there is a recession, shifting AS to the right. So let's take AS to the right. Now it's going to bring this back to equilibrium and again you see quantity one does not change. Price level does. So whatever happens to the price level, output will always stay the same. Hi guys, it's me again. Really quickly, I'm going to be going over the ADAS graph terms. And to start off, we're going to go with the AS, standing, which stands for aggregate supply. And the components of aggregate supply would be cost production, which the, if there's a lower cost, then aggregate supply would move to the right. And if there's a higher cost, aggregate supply would move to the left. Other components being business taxes, technology and efficiency, education, and resource costs. Resource costs being labor, oil, land, etc. Okay, so another term you guys will have to be familiar with is with the LRAS, the Long Run Aggregate Supply. With the Long Run Aggregate Supply, our potential production level is directly related to PPC, the Production's Possibility Curve, which you'll learn in a different lesson. But with the LRAS, it will move if the unemployment compensation changes. The last term of the ADAS graph is AD itself. The components of AD are net exports, 
consumption, government spending, and gross investment. Now, AD is moved by two policies, fiscal and monetary. Fiscal expansionary policy would be to increase government spending, decrease taxes, and this would be to get us out of a recessionary period. The opposite fiscal contractionary policy would be to lower government spending, increase taxes, and this would be to get us out of an inflationary period. Monetary expansionary policy would be to buy bonds, lower the discount rate, and lower the reserve ratio. Opposite of that, monetary contractionary policy would be to sell bonds, increase the discount rate, and increase the reserve ratio. Now if you're unfamiliar with discount rate and reserve ratio, it's fine. I've got it covered. The discount rate is the rate at which Federal Reserve loans money to banks. The reserve ratio is the amount banks must hold in their reserves.